Every time archaeologists unearth something new, there's a chance that it may redefine history. For the most part, historians believe they've established a reasonably good idea about how the world would have worked thousands of years ago. We've uncovered various pieces of history that have shown us how the ancients would have lived their daily lives and how their local governments and economies would have worked. Stone saws If we were to take a look back into the time of the ancient Egyptians, many of us would be left wondering how these ancient people were able to do the things that they were able to do. Obviously, it goes without saying that the pyramids are some of the most complex pieces of work that have ever been uncovered. We still don't know how these people managed to lift these bricks and place them in such a complicated shape. However, another question arises when we realize that these bricks were precisely cut by a sophisticated piece of machinery. The problem with this fact is that we've never been able to find out what sort of technology the Egyptians would have used to cut such precise lines into stone blocks. Even today, cutting stone is very difficult and requires special tools to do it properly. Oftentimes, these machines that are used to cut stone run on either electricity or gasoline, so it's easy to see why it would have been so difficult for the ancients to have created such a complicated machine. Experts have noted that there are saw marks on the stones that prove that they would have been cut with some sort of primitive saw. When examining these marks more closely, it also becomes apparent that the blades used to cut these stones would have been incredibly sharp, far sharper than what would have been readily available available at the time. Stranger still, researchers noted that the saw would have been moved back and forth with laser-like precision. This would not have been done by hand. However, we have no idea what sort of machinery would have been used to create such precise lines in the stone. 5,000-year-old water system in Iran Several years ago, a team of researchers was excavating an old village in Iran when they came across something they could not believe. As they unearthed various historic relics, they found something that made their jaws drop – an ancient plumbing system. We don't know too much about this system, however, they realized that the area would have been around 5,000 years old. This means that modern plumbing would have been around in the distant past, thousands of years before we thought such a thing would have been possible. The archaeologists announced that the pipes that ran through this system were carved out of stone, suggesting that complicated tools would have been needed to create these archaic pipes. Each of the pipes measured about one meter, with the pipes connecting to one another to form longer shafts that would be used to send water from one place to another. As far as historians can tell, these pipes would have been created in Persia around 5,000 years ago, meaning that the people who lived here were far more advanced than we have been led to believe. We know that the Persians are known for being one of the earliest cultures to create advanced systems that would have been used to distribute water. The locals would have created a network of well-like shafts that were each connected by a series of sloping tunnels, much like how modern plumbing works in your home. This would have been used to irrigate fields and also send water to various homes. Boca della Verita just one look at the Boca della Verita is enough to send a chill down your spine. This strange, disc-shaped work of art is incredibly eerie and will likely stick in your nightmares for many days to come. Many people still argue about what this strange piece of history would have actually been used for. For the most part, the story and history of this work of art is a complete mystery, but historians have done their best to piece together the events that would have led to such a bizarre piece being created. The strange relief is currently located in the Church of Santa Maria in the Cosma Dean in Rome. It was first mentioned in writing in 1485, but we don't know for sure how old it really is. Known as the Face of Truth, it may have once belonged to the Greeks and could have served as a type of altar. Some people believe it could have been created in reference to the Greek figure Hercules. However, there isn't any evidence for this, and it's purely a guess. 
Many Roman businessmen from thousands of years ago were known to travel many miles away to pay respects to Zeus, so it's possible that this sculpture could have been part of that ceremony. However, there's also speculation that this disc-shaped object could have been used as a simple sewer drain cover. Considering it has openings in its eyes, nose, and mouth, that is definitely a possibility. The truth is, we don't know much about it at all. However, researchers are still doing their best they can to piece together the history of this bizarre relic. Inca Irrigation The Persians were not the only people with a knack for sophisticated irrigation systems. Some time-honored buildings from the Inca period also show that the indigenous population in South America had impressive technical knowledge. The construction of the Moray Complex shows how well the Incas knew how to weave the natural environment into their buildings. Moray was built in three natural sinkholes. This may seem a bit unusual, but keep watching to see how this all comes together. Here, the Inca people created countless terraced plateaus which are laid out in such a way that each step has its own individual microclimate. This made it possible for the members of the Inca culture to grow a wide variety of crops there. The water supply was channeled into the various parts of the facility via a complex system of canals. Incidentally, we find such Inca terraces not only in Moray, but even in the most diverse regions that were once inhabited by this tribe. The unique slopes serve the purpose of growing numerous foods and thus preventing food crises. Among other things, the Incas planted potatoes, corn, tomatoes, peanuts, and peppers here. It may seem unusual that such a tribe would be able to plan out and create such a complicated system for growing crops. However, these tribes seem to have had a better understanding of the natural world than we do, even after years of research have gone by. The Inca people had truly mastered the art of surviving and adapting to the natural world. 2,000-Year-Old Lamps Two bronze lamps were found that were created around 2,000 years ago before they were finally placed in the grave of an emperor's grandson. As you can clearly see, the lamps depict geese that have turned their heads backward. The large fish that the two birds hold in their beaks are not only used for aesthetic decoration, but also function as smoke extraction hoods and wind protection. As soon as the fuel was ignited, the smoke moved into the goose's body, which was most likely filled with water. Water. In addition, the position of the fish could be changed manually, which in turn allowed the brightness of the light to be adjusted. The ancient objects proved to us once again that the people of that era had extraordinary technical skills, greater than some of us possess thousands of years later. Egyptian Blue it's well known that the Egyptians were not only masters of creating impressive buildings and objects, but they also knew how to decorate them with magnificent colors. This particular color we'll be discussing today, which appropriately went down in history as Egyptian blue, is one of the oldest artificially produced color pigments known to man. In order to obtain the bright blue color, several complex steps were necessary, which required considerable chemical knowledge, something we didn't know the ancient Egyptians had until recently. In detail, limestone and quartz sand were mixed with bronze shavings and a small amount of baking soda. The mixture then had to be heated over a long period of time at a temperature of at least 870 degrees Celsius. Ultimately, this resulted in the beautiful pigment that the Egyptians have become famous for. This color would be painted or infused in various objects and is one of the most recognizable shades of blue in the world. It's known that the Egyptians produced the color as early as the 4th dynasty, which dates from 2639 to 2504 BC. From there, the sophisticated manufacturing technique spread to Mesopotamia, Greece, and the Roman Empire. The age-old secret of the ever-burning lamps no matter how modern and sophisticated our lamps are, sooner or later the day comes when they'll give up the ghost and need to be replaced. 
However, there are some reports from ancient cultures that tell of ever-burning lamps that seem all the more astonishing. Among other things, the ancient Greek philosopher Plutarch once reported an extraordinary lamp that was located above the door of an ancient Egyptian temple. More precisely, it was a small open flame that neither wind nor rain could harm. However, this report is by no means the only one that tells of such eternally burning lamps. Similar objects are said to have been located in India, Armenia, and Greece. The classic author Pausanias mentioned a golden lamp in the temple of Minerva Polias in Athens, the flame of which burned for several years without having to be supplied with new fuel. According to legend, the Roman king Numa Pompilius was a friend of the gods, and the supernatural beings explained to the ruler how he could make an eternally burning flame. The lamp is said to have been housed in a temple. In fact, the stories about the never-ending flames date to the Middle Ages. Since such phenomena cannot be explained from a scientific point of view, some people use other approaches to better understand this strange technology. If you believe these stories, the eternal fires were created either by diabolical demons or by extraterrestrial deities. The truth is, we may never know for sure. 16,700-year-old tools Archaeologists found a set of tools that have been buried and lost to time in Texas. This may not seem too exciting, but they quickly learned that the tools date back 16,700 years. We know that our current dating equipment is not incredibly accurate in the grand scheme of things, but either way, these tools predate American history by thousands of years. Up to this point, we assumed that the first people to have settled in North America would have been the Clovis culture. However, these tools turn American history on its head and prove that there were people living and thriving in America long before the Clovis culture claimed the land. The tools were sent off to be dated, and the researchers concluded that the estimated date of 16,700 years is correct. We don't know much about the tools yet, but we hope to learn more about their origins and who created them in the coming years. Just imagine being on a team of researchers when you find an artifact like this that completely rewrites history. It must be such an amazing feeling to be part of an investigative crew like that. The first computer in the world. Computers have become an indispensable part of our modern day-to-day -day life. Regardless of whether it's working, playing, or simply passing the time, modern computers enrich our lives in a wide variety of ways. While we obviously place the invention of the first modern computer in the 20th century, some amazing devices from the 1770s make us question this claim. To be more precise, we'll be talking about the three androids that were built by a father-son team known as Jacques Drou. The amazing characters are known as the scribe, the organist, and the draftsman. If you start the mechanism of the writer, he dips his quill into an inkwell. If you pull a lever, the mechanical scribbler even begins to draw a few lines on paper. The machine is able to write down text with up to 40 characters. The draftsman, in turn, accomplishes the feat of producing four different motifs. His mechanism is controlled by discs on which the templates for the drawings are located. The organist, in turn, works with a pin roller and can play five different pieces of music. The three androids are still fully functional and are in a museum in Neuchâtel. Puma Punku Under the somewhat peculiar name of Puma Punku lies an extensive complex of temples and cultic buildings that have been discovered in western Bolivia and which are believed to belong to the advanced civilization of the Inca. The abundance of subjunctive moods in this description is due to the fact that comparatively little is known about the collection from primeval ruins to date. Neither the peak of contemporary culture nor the cause or timing of its decline can be clearly defined. 
On the other hand, it's assumed that the same civilization was at home here that was also responsible for the Nazca Lines and the Sahama Lines. The temple itself was built with the help of gigantic blocks of stone, which once again leave experts wondering by what means they were moved. And then there are also the stories of the descendants of the former inhabitants, who closely link the place to the gods and the first humans. It's doubtful whether one can ever clarify what exactly the purpose of this place was. Many of the records from this period have been lost for centuries. Mysterious Black Boxes after all the decades that Egypt has been at the center of the archaeological world, it's almost a little surprising when new mysteries are uncovered during excavations. All the great pyramids are already known, and many temples have now been excavated again. It's usually the interiors of these ruins that reveal new mysteries. This is also the case with the 24 black boxes found in an old temple in Memphis. They weigh tons and are processed so finely that they could have kept their contents airtight for centuries. But what about the boxes? We're not sure, but the temple gives a hint. It was dedicated to an original god who walked the earth in the form of a bull. Today, it's assumed that the remains of sacred bulls were to be buried in the gigantic coffins. However, they were never used, and there's no precise information about their purpose. And so, they will probably remain a little secret of Egypt for the time being. Mysterious Nanostructures a so-called upart or out-of-place artifact was found deep in the mountains of Russia 30 years ago. These are structures, finds, and artifacts that, based on their location and age, do not really fit the period they should be from. In this specific case, it's a question of tiny screws, so-called coils, made of the finest carbon fiber and found by a group in the middle of the mountains. To this day, no one knows where they really come from. What could be the origin of these finds is still part of research. Some assume the remains of some missile test nearby, but that wouldn't match the age of the structures. So the question remains how humans were able to make such small objects 20,000 to 300,000 years ago and what their purpose may have been. The Asuka Monolith the village of Asuka in Japan is one of the oldest settlements and is said to have been part of a high civilization in this part of the world as early as 250 AD. While researchers are still puzzling over important details of this ancient civilization, it's primarily some things they left behind in the immediate vicinity that are the focus of the considerations. There are, for example, the monoliths and statues with various figures from the currents of Buddhism, which can be found every everywhere in the surrounding nature to this day. Even today, the stone structures can be found in various places in the region. There's also a stone boat that appears to have been carved out of a rock, and it's entirely unclear what it was once used for. This leaves Asuka and this ancient civilization a great mystery to modern science. The Forgotten Stones of Baalbek as you may know, the ancient extent of the Roman Empire was immense. The Romans advanced deep into the Middle East during their conquests. This is indicated by some old Roman ruins, which can even be found in Lebanon, for example. This is where another secret is hidden. Traces of former stonework can be found everywhere in Baalbek. However, these are not simple quarries, but massive monoliths that have simply been forgotten for centuries. What is their origin? How could Romans and subsequent civilizations just forget that they have huge rocks in the ground? Again, theories diverge. Some believe that these are works for buildings that have never been worked on. Others believe they are the keystones of ancient temples and fortifications that haven't survived the centuries. The scientist's search continues, and the stone giants are now an important testimony for tourists in the region. 12 Angle Stones 
Among many other things, the Incas were known for their buildings. The art with which they worked stones and piled them up into structures can still be seen in many of the former temples that have survived the centuries with ease. Anyone who deals with the work in detail will find that there are a large number of special peculiarities. This includes, for example, the art of the twelve angle stones. They fit together perfectly. Not even a sheet of paper seems to fit between them. And they this ensures that many of the former buildings still stand securely today. Whether it was a coincidence that the master builders discovered this shape for themselves, or whether it was based on mathematical calculations is still a subject of research today. The Dashka Stone just a forehead with strangely shaped cracks, or actually a map that could be close to 120 million years old. The Dashka Stone is one of the great mysteries of archaeology that remain unsolved to this day. The stone was found in the Ural Mountains in 1999 and weighs around a ton and has since been examined by researchers from all over the world. The lines on it could give an indication of the Ural Mountains and at the same time have markings pointing to former constructions. Ancient glyphs are also found on it, believed to be of ancient Chinese origin. To date, however, they have not been unraveled. Stone Saws if we were to take a look back into the time of the ancient Egyptians, many of us would be left wondering how these ancient people were able to do the things that they were able to do. Obviously, it goes without saying that the pyramids are some of the most complex pieces of work that have ever been uncovered. We still don't know how these people managed to lift these bricks and place them in such a complicated shape. However, another question arises when we realize that these bricks were precisely cut by a sophisticated piece of machinery. The problem with this fact is that we've never been able to find out exactly what sort of technology the Egyptians would have used to cut such precise lines into stone blocks. Even today, cutting stone is very difficult and requires special tools to do it properly. Oftentimes, these machines that are used to cut stone run on either electricity or gasoline, so it's easy to see why it would have been so difficult for the ancients to have created such a complicated machine. Experts have noted that there are saw marks on the stones that prove that they would have been cut with some sort of primitive saw. When examining these marks more closely, it also becomes apparent that the blades used to cut these stones would have been incredibly sharp, far sharper than what would have been readily available at the time. Stranger still, researchers noted that the saw would have been moved back and forth with laser-like precision. This would not have been done by hand. However, we have no idea what sort of machinery would have been used to create such precise lines in the stone. The Age-Old Secret of the Ever-Burning Lamps no matter how modern and sophisticated our lamps are, sooner or later the day comes when they give up the ghost and need to be replaced. However, there are some reports from ancient cultures that tell of ever-burning lamps that seem all the more astonishing. Among other things, the ancient Greek philosopher Plutarch once reported an extraordinary lamp that was located above the door of an ancient Egyptian temple. More precisely, it was a small open flame that neither wind nor rain could harm. However, this report is by no means the only one that tells of such eternally burning lamps. Similar objects are said to have been located in India, Armenia, and Greece. The classic author Pausanias mentioned a golden lamp in the temple of Minerva Pelias in Athens, the flame of which burned for several years without having to be supplied with new fuel. According to legend, the Roman king Numa Pompilius was a friend of the gods, and the supernatural beings explained to the ruler how he could make an eternally burning flame. The lamp is said to have been housed in a temple. In fact, the stories about the never-ending flames date to the Middle Ages. Since such phenomena cannot be explained from a scientific point of view, some people use other approaches to better understand this strange technology. If you believe these stories, the eternal fires were created either by diabolical demons or by extraterrestrial deities. The truth is, we may never know for sure. 16,700-year-old tools 
archaeologists found a set of tools that had been buried and lost to time in Texas. This may not seem too exciting, but they quickly learned that the tools date back 16,700 years. We know that our current dating equipment is not incredibly accurate in the grand scheme of things, but either way, these tools predate American history by thousands of years. Up to this point, we assume that the first people to have settled in North America would have been the Clovis culture. However, these tools turn American history on its head and prove that there were people living and thriving in America long before the Clovis culture claimed the land. The tools were sent off to be dated, and researchers concluded that the estimated date of 16,700 years is correct. We don't know much about the tools yet, but we hope to learn more about their origins and who created them in the coming years. Just imagine being on a team of researchers when you find an artifact like this that completely rewrites history. It must be such an amazing feeling to be part of an investigative crew like that. The Moray Ruins the ruins of Moray are another testament to the Inca and are as amazing as the other structures known to have been built by these people. Similar to a Roman theater, several terraces are arranged in a circular shape. Unlike the Roman buildings, this was probably not a meeting place. In fact, it could be an ancient form of irrigation systems. In the terraces, it would not only be possible to grow different things, but also to irrigate them in a controlled manner. It would be an example of how the Incas were successful with agriculture even in rather inhospitable regions. The Rock Churches Churches carved into rock are not uncommon on Earth, yet few works are as impressive as the rock churches of Ethiopia. Here they didn't just cut a single church into the rock, but wanted to create 11 different buildings in a kind of underground rock fortress. It's now assumed that the king of the region wanted to rebuild Jerusalem in his own state at this point. For this, they've started knocking out the Dome of the Rock, sketching other churches and starting work. Unfortunately, the monuments were never completely finished, but they still offer an impressive site for pilgrims and visitors. Ulfbert Finds of swords throughout the Mediterranean region had one strange feature, a special steel and an engraving that reads Ulfbert. For many decades, researchers were not clear what this strange engraving was and why it was found on swords from Syria, France, England, and Africa in equal measure. Today it's assumed that it could have been some kind of medieval trademark. The assumption is that they're all from a medieval Franconian blacksmith. He's said to have received special steel from all parts of the world and made them into special swords. Later, apparently, there were even fakes with his engraving, but it remains a big mystery. Greek Fire The fire-breathing ships that can burn down enemy armadas are known from movies and television. Greek Fire was the name, and it's probably based on a real weapon as it was frequently mentioned in records. Contrary to what the name might suggest, however, it was not used by the ancient Greeks but by the Byzantines, who existed as the successors of the ancient Greek Empire. Although we're now aware of the type of application at sea, many questions about the weapon remain unanswered. This is also due to the fact that the records of the production of the actual incendiary material disappeared with the Byzantine Empire. And so to this day, the big question remains as to what made this mighty weapon so special and how it worked, down to the last step. Surely, this is only an incomplete list of puzzling finds of ancient technologies. Nimrud Lens The year is 1850, when British explorer Austin Henry Layard stumbles upon what is quite a mysterious artifact in the Palace of Nimrud. The compact object that would later become known as the Nimrud Lens was created around 750 BC and is still a mystery to experts today. 
crafted from natural rock crystal, the artifact has 12 cavities that once held an unknown liquid. To this day, experts are still speculating about the purpose of the Nimrud lens. In this regard, some researchers suspect that it may have functioned as an ancient magnifying glass. However, other experts consider it more likely that the object had no practical use at all and was a purely decorative element. On the other hand, the idea that the lens was once part of an ancient telescope that the Assyrians used to study the stars and planets sounds much more interesting. Another explanation is based on the fact that the object was able to focus sunlight and could thus be used as a burning glass. Kumbe Mayo Around 20 kilometers southwest of the Peruvian city of Cajamarca is the ancient site of Cumbe Mayo. Built around 1500 BC, the complex consists of a grotto, many petroglyphs, and an ingenious aqueduct. It's not least the precise elaboration of those water pipes that appears both fascinating and enigmatic. At an altitude of 3,500 meters, the construct of canals stretches for 9 kilometers, channeling the water through some crop fields to a large reservoir. But not only the background of the waterway carefully carved into the volcanic rock, but also the rock drawings that have not yet been deciphered resemble a great mystery. In fact, we can't even say for sure who made Cumbe Mayo. The Age-Old Secret of the Ever-Burning Lamps No matter how modern and sophisticated our lamps are, sooner or later the day comes when they'll give up the ghost and need to be replaced. However, there are some reports from ancient cultures that tell of ever-burning lamps that seem all the more astonishing. Among other things, the ancient Greek philosopher Plutarch once reported an extraordinary lamp that was located above the door of an Egyptian temple. More precisely, it was a small open flame that neither wind nor rain could harm. However, this report is by no means the only one that tells of such eternally burning lamps. Similar objects are said to have been located in India, Armenia, and Greece. The classic author Pausanias mentioned a golden lamp in the temple of Minerva Polyas in Athens, the flame of which burned for several years without having to be supplied with new fuel. According to legend, the Roman king Numa Pompilius was a friend of the gods, and the supernatural beings explained to the ruler how he could make an eternally burning flame. The lamp is said to have been housed in a temple. In fact, the stories about the never-ending flames date to the Middle Ages. Since such phenomena cannot be explained from a scientific point of view, some people use other approaches to better understand this strange technology. If you believe these stories, the eternal fires were created either by diabolical demons or by extraterrestrial deities. The truth is, we may never know for sure. Stradivari Violins Antonio Stradivari is still considered the greatest violin maker of all time. The stringed instruments that the Italian made during his lifetime are by far the most expensive on the market. Above all, it's the excellent sound quality that's always made Stradivarius violins so popular. However, we still don't know exactly how these incomparable sound characteristics were created in detail. The manufacturing technique was a closely guarded family secret. Some experts believe it was the special wood that gave the instruments their enchanting sound. However, this cannot have been the only reason, because this material was also available to all other violin makers at the time. Countless scientists are still trying to decipher the secret of the instruments. Possible explanations include the use of borax, the influence of mold, and last but not least, Stradivari's incomparable craftsmanship. Maiden 
In the southeast of Baku's old town, the impressive Maiden Tower has been towering for many centuries. What the exact background of this almost 30-meter-high building is all about, however, is still controversial. Some speculate that the foundations were built as early as the 5th century, while the upper sections weren't built until 700 years later. It's also considered likely that the Maiden Tower once belonged to a larger complex that no longer exists today. However, what the now world-famous landmark of the Azerbaijani capital was once used for is uncertain. The construction of the tower can be assigned neither to Persian nor to Turkish architecture. In the ranks of the researchers, a use as a religious site, as a fortification, or as an observatory is being discussed. Some archaeologists believe that the Caspian Sea reached as far as the Maiden Tower at that time. This assumption would in turn coincide with an ancient legend that gave the building its name, which is still in use today. A princess is said to have thrown herself from the tower into the sea to avoid an arranged marriage. The First Computer in the World Computers have become an indispensable part of our modern day-to-day -day life. Regardless of whether it's for working, playing, or simply passing the time, modern computers enrich our lives in a wide variety of ways. While we obviously place the invention of the first modern computer in the 20th century, some amazing devices from the 1770s make us question this claim. To be more precise, we'll be talking about the three androids that were built by a father-son team known as the Jacques Droz. The amazing characters are known as the Scribe, the Organist, and the Draftsman. If you start the mechanism of the writer, he dips his quill into an inkwell. If you pull a lever, the mechanical scribbler even begins to draw a few lines on paper. The machine is able to write down text with up to 40 characters. The draftsman, in turn, accomplishes the feat of producing four different motifs. His mechanism is controlled by disks on which the templates for the drawings are located. The organist, in turn, works with a pin roller and can play five different pieces of music. The three androids are still fully functional and are in a museum in Neuchâtel. Greek Fire Centuries ago, Greek fire was considered one of the most ferocious and effective weapons of all. In detail, it was a sophisticated incendiary weapon used by the Byzantines from the 7th century AD to set enemy ships ablaze. A flammable liquid was pumped onto enemy targets. According to some contemporary records, the use of this weapon summoned a hellish inferno. Unable to extinguish the burning ships, the enemy crew was thrown into utter chaos, and orderly action was no longer possible. Thanks to the Greek fire, the Byzantines were able to secure their supremacy in the eastern Mediterranean for many centuries. The composition of the incendiary agent and how it was produced remains a mystery to this day. This is mainly due to the fact that the exact background of the weapon was subject to the strictest secrecy. So, the instructions for the production of liquid fire went down together with the Byzantine Empire. Sculptures by Adolphe Fouiré Between the years 1894 and 1907, the Frenchman Adolphe Julien Fouiré dedicated himself to the last artistic act of his life. He immortalized numerous sculptures in the rocks of the Brittany coast. Fouiré had previously worked as a priest. However, after the cleric had to resign his office, he decided to spend his day creating impressive statues. So it was that Adolf carved over 300 of these unique figures into the granite rock. Many of the sculptures show fairy tale creatures such as sea monsters and other mythical figures. However, due to sea erosion, the fascinating works are in danger of gradually disappearing. Yangshan Quarry Not every monumental structure was lucky enough to be completed. Among the most famous unfinished structures of the past are the massive remains found in China's Yangshan Quarry. 
At the beginning of the 15th century, the Yongle Emperor ordered the construction of an oversized stele. The massive pillar was then to be taken to the Ming Shaoling Mausoleum to adorn the final resting place of Yongle's father. So it was that workers began quarrying three separate pieces that would later be assembled. Ultimately, however, the builders encountered a problem that couldn't be overcome. Those responsible realized that it seemed simply impossible to transport the massive individual parts to the mausoleum. Together, the three components weighed more than 30,000 tons. If the workers had managed to complete the stele back then, it would have towered almost 75 meters in the air. Ultimately, the project was shelved entirely, and a significantly smaller pillar was installed in the Ming Shaoling Mausoleum instead. Stone Saws if we were to take a look back into the time of the ancient Egyptians, many of us would be left wondering how these ancient people were able to do the things that they were able to do. Obviously, it goes without saying that the pyramids are some of the most complex pieces of work that have ever been uncovered. We still don't know how these people managed to lift these bricks and place them in such a complicated shape. However, another question arises when we realize that these bricks were precisely cut by a sophisticated piece of machinery. The problem with this fact is that we've never been able to find out what sort of technology the Egyptians would have used to cut such precise lines into stone blocks. Even today, cutting stone is very difficult and requires special tools to do it properly. Oftentimes, these machines that are used to cut stone run on either electricity or gasoline, so it's easy to see why it would have been so difficult for the ancients to have created such a complicated machine. Experts have noted that there are are saw marks on the stones that prove that they would have been cut with some sort of primitive saw. When examining these marks more closely, it also becomes apparent that the blades used to cut these stones would have been incredibly sharp far sharper than what would have been readily available at the time. Stranger still, researchers noted that the saw would have been moved back and forth with laser-like precision. This would not have been done by hand. However, we have no idea what sort of machinery would have been used to create such precise lines in the stone. Nepenthes Whoever was struggling with fear, worry, and depression in ancient Greece could fall back on a true magic drug to get rid of all their ailments in one fell swoop, Nepenthes. While the miraculous medicine was primarily mentioned in Greek mythology, quite a few historians believe that it was a remedy that was also used in the real world. It's assumed that it was an opiate or cannabis. However, the question of how this ancient antidepressant was composed in detail and whether it really existed outside of myths and legends can no longer be answered from today's perspective. Bendable Glass whether the Romans actually knew how to make flexible, virtually unbreakable glass is a matter of heated debate among historians to this day. If you believe the records of Pliny the Elder and Petronius, the exciting story played out as follows. One day, a humble inventor came to Emperor Tiberius to present his latest achievement. It was a glass bowl, which the man immediately threw on the floor with full force. Instead of shattering into all its individual pieces, the jar merely dented, allowing the inventor to snap the bowl back into its original shape in a jiffy with a small hammer. The man proudly announced that he was the only one who knew how to make the flexible glass. However, instead of falling into enthusiastic astonishment, Tiberius decided to take a far more drastic step. He had his visitor put to death on the spot. The emperor is said to have feared that the flexible glass could become far more valuable than gold and silver. In order to prevent the valuable precious metals from being devalued in this way, he preferred to destroy the knowledge of the secret manufacturing technique together with its inventor. Archimedes' Death Ray According to an ancient legend, the Greek mathematician Archimedes devised a deadly device that could set fire to even distant ships. It was a sophisticated combination of mirrors that bundled and reflected the incoming sunlight. 
In fact, in 2005, some scientists managed to reconstruct Archimedes' death ray. However, this required 127 mirrors and an irradiation time of 10 minutes. Whether and how the legendary concave mirror was actually used is unknown. Pomoponco Located near Lake Titicaca, the Bolivian archaeological site of Tiwanaku towers at an altitude of more than 3,800 meters. Puma Punko, which translates as Gate of the Puma, is also part of these ancient testimonies. The site, built in the 6th century AD, covers an area of 14 hectares. When the Spaniards accidentally rediscovered the complex in 1549, they were deeply impressed by the structural perfection and the gigantic monolith. However, the European conquerors were by no means the first to rediscover this legendary place. Created by the ancient Tiwanaku civilization, the Inca were so fascinated by the Puma Punko that they believed this was where the world was created. The heart of this complex is a platform mound that's almost 170 meters long. The strikingly straight structures that still adorn the area may have been much more spectacular in the past. According to this, the buildings at that time were decorated with shiny metal plates, colorful ceramic works, and ornate ornaments that greeted you at every corner. This overwhelming sight was finally completed by the people. The elegantly dressed citizens were joined by priests in breathtaking robes and social elites who underlined their rank by wearing sparkling jewels. But not only the external appearance, but also the sophisticated presentation of Puma Punku leaves us in awe. The terraced platform hill was clad in such a way that the meticulously layered floors were optimally supported. The structure easily withstood even severe earthquakes. The channels that collected the rainwater on the top platform and channeled the cool water into the inner structures also testified to the exceptional skills of the builders. These artificial waterways were laid out like oversized jigsaw puzzles, the precisely worked out sandstone blocks of which meshed perfectly. In fact, the stone blocks fitted so precisely that not even a piece of paper could have fit between them. A modern computer reconstruction has revealed that the megaliths were once oriented to give the viewer the impression of staring into infinity. In order to achieve this visual effect, the buildings were arranged according to size, eventually ending in the central monumental structure. However, that magnificent building is now in ruins. When we take a look at the individual components, it becomes clear why the construction of the plant is repeatedly at the center of controversial theories. According to this, the largest monolith discovered is 7.8 meters long and weighs more than 130 tons. Chemical analyses show that the material came from a distance of 10 to 90 kilometers. It's generally assumed that the massive raw blocks were transported by countless workers with the help of ramps and ropes, but this hypothesis has not been proven beyond doubt. But how can the flat surfaces, the precise edges, and the perfect angles be explained? What's more, many stones were worked out so uniformly that you could swap them out at will without changing the overall structure. Did the creators of Puma Punku actually have some secret laser technology that they used to cut their monoliths to size on the fly? Or do we once again tend to hopelessly underestimate the abilities of our ancestors? Let us know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Unfinished Obelisk with a height of almost 42 meters and a weight of around 1,170 tons, the obelisk of Aswan could have been the largest obelisk of antiquity if it had ever been completed. In contrast to the world-famous Pyramids of Giza or the mythical Sphinx, the ancient Egyptian construction project was never to be completed. Like so many other objects belonging to the inhabitants of the pharaohs, the unfinished obelisk was made of red granite. This extremely hard rock was also used for burial chambers, false doors, columns, and wall coverings. The puzzling thing, the tools that the ancient Egyptians used back then were made of basalt rock dolerite. The hammers, which were made of this softer material, would probably have become useless within a very short time if they were working on much harder rock. 
But this is not the only mystery that accompanies the gigantic column to this day. As you can see, the obelisk of Aswan is located in a huge ditch. In this regard, some skeptics say that in such a cramped environment, it was almost impossible for the workers to deliver powerful blows. In addition, the construct is adorned with many mysterious wedge-shaped indentations. In all likelihood, these traces date back to Roman times. At that time, people tried to split the obelisk in order to then remove it, but since the granite was much too hard, all these attempts failed. There are countless theories regarding the type of tools and saws that would have been required to complete such an incredible work of art. However, to this day, these mysteries are yet to be solved. When you look at many of the accomplishments the Egyptians made in terms of architecture, it's difficult to believe that their structures were not crafted with modern tools. We're still unsure of how the Egyptians managed to create many of the incredible things they did. Serapium it's been known for a long time that the mystical death cult of the ancient Egyptians was not limited to humans, but also spread to animals. The Apis bulls were also revered as sacred creatures in the ranks of the inhabitants of the pharaohs. In fact, it's said to have been the earthly embodiment of the god Ptah or Osiris. To pay their last respects to the massive cattle after death, they were laid to rest in special places. A look at the Serapium of Saqqara shows the extent of the ancient Egyptians' love for bulls. According to this, there are 28 burial niches in the underground necropolis, 24 of which contain gigantic granite sarcophaguses. The fact that there's no trace of the mortal remains of the bulls today is due to the zeitgeist of the early 18th century. When the Frenchman Paul Lucas was exploring the complex, it was common practice in Egypt to trade in objects from necropolises. According to this, the researcher also discovered some bull mummy parts at markets, which were advertised as ordinary merchandise. But back to the mysterious coffins. It's obvious that an object intended to house the body of a full-grown bull must be significantly larger than a normal sarcophagus. And indeed, the Serapium bull coffins weigh up to 80 tons, making them one of the largest and heaviest sarcophagi of all antiquity. And here too, the question arises as to how the Egyptians managed to bring the massive structures into perfect shapes with the simplest of tools. Added to this is the inexplicable fact that the granite used for this had to be lugged over a thousand kilometers from Aswan. How the people of that time accomplished this logistical masterpiece and why they went to all this trouble in the first place is still an unsolved mystery. It seems pretty clear that the ancient Egyptians must have been in possession of some sort of lost technology. When you think about how many times the ancient Egyptian cities must have been raided after the downfall of Egypt, it becomes much more reasonable to assume that this technology has simply been lost, stolen, or destroyed over the many thousands of years that have since passed. However, we just don't know enough to say anything for sure. Stone of al Nasla. In the middle of the al Nafud desert, far away from any civilization, a huge sandstone formation greets you that could not be more enigmatic the so-called Stone of al Nasla. The huge rock in Saudi Arabia looks as if it had been cut in half by an oversized sword. In addition, the structure is adorned with mysterious petroglyphs, the history of which goes back many centuries. However, it's neither the horse, nor the human, nor the unknown inscription that has always fascinated visitors, but the strikingly straight gap that separates the two boulders from each other. Naturally, the stone of Nasla comes with some big questions. Who divided the massive structure so perfectly in the middle? How was this accomplished? And how can the stones stand on tiny pedestals without falling over? Given today's topic, it's not surprising that the Al Nasla stone has also been used time and again in the evidence for ancient laser technology. In this regard, the geologists usually have nothing more than a weary smile left. In fact, the object is said to have been split neither by humans nor by aliens, but by nature. This is due to the extreme conditions that prevail in the desert, more precisely to the large temperature gradients of the day-night change. Thus, the object expanded with the heat of the day and contracted with the cold of the night. This continued until it finally broke through in the middle. 
wind and water then fine-tuned the gap. In fact, thousands of years ago, the climate in the region was much wetter than it is today. Accordingly, the grains of sand carried by the wind in combination with the moisture acted like a kind of natural sandpaper, which ultimately gave the gap its straight edges. Although there's at least one scientific explanation for the background of the al Nasla stone, the convinced supporters of the laser theory are of course not so easily fobbed off. To them, the structure in the desert still embodies tangible evidence that our ancestors were far more advanced than we currently dare to dream. Ancient Seismograph It is the year 138 AD when in Luyang, a small ball falls from the mouth of a bronze dragon into the torn open maw of a frog. What sounds like an insignificant banality at first glance actually confirmed the unrivaled sophistication of the Chinese polymath Zhang Hong. His seismograph had just registered an earthquake more than 640 kilometers away. And this, although none of the people present had felt even a hint of a tremor. The construction, which by the way was developed about 1700 years before the first seismographs of the Western world, consisted of a core of a movement-sensitive bronze vase. Placed on it, in turn, were eight outward-facing dragon heads, each holding a copper sphere in its mouth and pointing in different directions. Beneath the dragons crouched the aforementioned frogs. Even the slightest seismic tremor was enough to activate the hidden pendulum inside the vessel and release the spheres from their holders. To find out which direction the earthquake originated, one only had to look in the frog's mouth where the ball had landed. Unfortunately, Zhang Hen's original invention has not survived today. The specimens on display in museums are replicas. In fact, it would take until 2005 before a team of Chinese researchers succeeded for the first time in making a working model of the ancient masterpiece. Nuclear Reactor from Prehistoric Times Chicago Pile 1 is considered the first working man-made nuclear reactor in history. Built in 1942, the first experimental reactors were part of the Manhattan Project, which famously resulted in the invention and construction of the atomic bomb. But what if we told you that in 1972, scientists came across a nuclear reactor that was created significantly earlier? And let's be clear, we're not talking about a period of a few decades here, but over a whopping 2 billion years. Discovered in the Oklo uranium mine in Gabon, the remains of the nuclear reactor continue to captivate experts to this day. In view of the fact that 2 billion years ago there were no trace of Homo sapiens, most experts agree that it must inevitably have been a natural entity. Basically, this mysterious structure is composed of the following components. A relatively pure uranium plug with a high concentration of the radioactive isotope U-235 and organic compounds such as graphite or water which slow down the neutrons produced by the uranium. Today, such a reactor could not be formed. The U-235 has simply become too rare for that. However, 2 billion years ago, the isotopes still made up about 3% of the natural uranium supply, the concentration needed for fission in a reactor. However, this discovery came so unexpectedly that a wide variety of assumptions were soon made about its true background. From extraterrestrial test reactors to the work of an unknown pre-human species. There were practically no limits to the corresponding theories. These assumptions were finally nourished by a strange finding that physicist Alex Meshik and his colleagues from Washington University recorded while examining the reactor. Specifically, the scientists came across a strange pattern of xenon isotopes. With these byproducts of uranium fission trapped in the aluminum phosphate materials around the reactor. The researchers noticed that the xenon isotopes were surprisingly scarce in the short-lived intermediates, or in other words, that it appeared as if the reactor had been regularly turned on and off. Glass Plate from Bet Sharim One of Israel's most significant archaeological sites, the Bet Sharim Caves, were inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List on July 5, 2015. At the heart of this is the large necropolis which was laid out from the 2nd to the 4th centuries and counts a total of 33 burial sites. In 1956, officials decided to convert a natural cave next to the catacombs into a small museum, 
But when the bulldozer began to remove the rubble and pave the way, it suddenly found itself in an awkward position. It had come across something so large and massive that it could not move forward. Soon after, it was clear that it was a heavy rectangular slab that initially looked like concrete. Because of its bulky size, it was left in place and it was decided without further ado to pave the surrounding area with flat stones. Measuring 2 by 3.3 meters and 45 centimeters thick, the slab was anything but dainty. And yet, it would take until 1963 before the massive structure once again became the focus of scientific attention. In the ranks of a joint expedition of the Corning Museum of Glass and the University of Missouri, the not entirely serious conjecture arose that the Bet Sharim plate might be made of glass. And what was initially met with great skepticism was actually to be confirmed in the course of a chemical analysis. Henceforth, the relic was to be comprehensively scrutinized. An examination of ceramic remains found there showed that the glass plate probably dates back to the late 4th century. So whoever made the glass 1600 years ago did so not to create a delicate artifact, but a massive material that could withstand even modern bulldozers. Weighing 9 tons, the plate advanced to become the third largest man-made piece of glass of all time when it was discovered, surpassed only by the giant telescope mirrors of the 20th century. It is estimated that 11 tons of raw material had to be heated to 1100 degrees Celsius and kept at that temperature for up to 10 days to produce it. Possibly, this process devoured 20 tons of wood as a fuel. The cave in which the work took place must have resembled a blazing inferno. Excavations have shown that the glass still rests on a bed of limestone blocks. The strong traces of burning show that the combustion chambers were also located there. But how is it that the glass plate is not transparent at all? Well, it's primarily because the object contains about twice as much calcium oxide as its contemporary counterparts. In detail, the conclusion is that the Bet Sharim plate was actually intended to be processed. From it, 50 to 60,000 individual glass vessels could have been blown. However, it is not known why the raw plate was never used for its original purpose. Iron Column Wondering why an ordinary iron column shows up in a post about the most unexplained artifacts of the past? Well, this becomes clear once we realize in what outstanding condition the object presents itself after all this time. As one of the oldest preserved iron monuments ever, the pillar has adorned the courtyard of the Kawato Islam Mosque in the south of Delhi for about 1,000 years. Its actual history, however, goes back even further. According to this, the column was probably made at the behest of the ruler Chandragupta II, who was in power between the years 375 and 414. An inscription indicates that the object was erected in honor of the Hindu deity Vishnu. But the king's kindness and bravery are not left unmentioned. Experts are still puzzling over what is it about the Iron Pillar's amazing lack of rust. Some scientists concluded that the monument has a special protective layer. This lattice structure would continue to grow independently since time immemorial and protect the iron structure from corrosion. Another attempt at explanation is based on the special manufacturing method of that time. The use of charcoal may have led to a high phosphorus content. Furthermore, it is conceivable that the secret of the rust-free columns lies in the special thickness of the coating. This allows the incident sunlight of the day to be stored in such a way that the rain and dew on the outside evaporate again immediately. Sadly, however, human superstition is sometimes stronger than the rust repellent properties. According to this, it is said to bring good luck to stand with one's back in front of the iron column, clasping it with one's hands. However, since this practice left countless smearings and damages, the structure has been protected from involuntary embraces by a fence since 1997. So guys, and now we're curious about your opinion. Which of the presented artifacts amazed you the most? And how do you think the background of these exciting finds can be explained? Feel free to get busy and write us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. And while you're at it, remember to give us a thumbs up and a subscription to stay up to date from now on. 
finally, feel free to take a look at the other exciting posts on our channel that we've linked for you here in the credits. And with that, thanks for watching, take care and see you next time.